The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and the earth, and the nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the, the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect, raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that each day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We are in Jesus Christ. I like that. Good. You you got an answer. That's right. The sermon's over. <laughs> Well, that would be great, because that's exactly what the scriptures are encouraging us to do today, to prepare and wait for Jesus Christ. However, go outside. You've got to search to find Jesus' name somewhere. You see the sand, you see the reindeer, you see the snowman, you see the glitter, you see the lights. And even the last subject of the great Macy's parade wasn't Jesus Christ, it was Santa. Although... Lisa and Mark did a good job carrying one of the great balloons. But Jesus wasn't in that parade preparing. Today, the church reminds us, prepare. There'll be four weeks. Each time we gather in the next four Sundays, we will light a candle preparing us. But what are we waiting for? Well, Paul gives us some ideas, but we may... Mm, I say, I think we may um, nod to Paul in our daily lives and really prepare for the Black Friday sales that go on over the weekend, for the Cyber Monday, for the, the Black sales that began honoring Thanksgiving weekend that began two weeks ago and will go on to, who knows, December 24th. What are we preparing for? Oh, okay, well, I know I'm going to be baking cookies just one day and one day decorate my house for Christmas. But what are we all preparing for? Baking is not enough. Gift wrapping is not enough. What are we preparing for? Today we gather to answer that question for the next few weeks. And the scriptures are very clear on what we are preparing for. We, we know God's word always hits it right on the head and exactly prepares us for what we are waiting for. And believe me, folks, it's not December 25th. That's not what the scriptures are talking about. From the book of Jeremiah, let's put it into place. Jeremiah kept warning the people of Israel you're really messing up your relationship with God. You're, you're not worshiping God correctly. You're not doing his mandates. You're not taking care of the poor. The widows are not being given food and, and shelter. And God is going to bring you all down in destruction. Now, eventually, they don't like to hear that from Jeremiah, but eventually that happens. The forces of Babylon and forces of other enemies of Jerusalem come in and destroy it. So he was giving a really succinct vision of what happens when we don't observe God in our lives. And you might say, well, the world doesn't observe God, and they're getting along pretty well. Well, look at the heart of the world. Look at the sadness. Look at the, the hunger. Look at the destitution. Look at the anger in our world. Now, we have to go out there. Our world is right here in our own town. 
here in Roosevelt and, and over in Manhattan and throughout the country. So all the destruction, well, okay, we had a destruction a few years ago, 9-11, so we saw physical destruction. That's all finished now. We repaired it. The hearts of the family members are still broken and still heavily sad. So, okay, so, so we'll, we'll say they have the sadness. But no, the sadness came as a symbol, and I'm not saying those perpetrators were instruments of the devil, but they were. But they were not bringing in the end of the world. And Jesus tells us, things are going to happen and you're going to be distracted and saying, oh, the end of the world's coming. Well, we got the end of the world. Let's drink and corral. And he uses that phrase. He, I mean, could you imagine Jesus? You ever imagine Jesus would say, hey, stop carousing? You know, you know what that means. Uh, having great parties, uh, carousing, drunkenness, because of the daily anxieties of life, because the second coming will catch us like a thief in the night. So Jesus says, know what you're preparing for. I paraphrase Jesus. But he's encouraging us to know what we are preparing for as a faithful community preparing for Christmas. I, I want to be honest with that. Because there's not one kid in this room, and it starts with me first, who doesn't look forward to December 24th and 5th. Yes, Church celebrates it. We celebrate it at our homes. We celebrate it with festivities and food. But that's only a mini version of what we're preparing for. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? What, what, what is the end result? And Paul makes it very clear in this letter to the Thessalonians. Thessalonica was a northern Greek community. And for some reason, that is the first letter of Scripture. That letter is written around the year 50. The first piece of scripture that is an epistle from Paul to the Thessalonians. And he says to them, here's, here's a good guideline to prepare in the 21st century for what you're looking for. Here's a good guideline. Just listen. This should be on our Christmas cards. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another, and for all. If we're not preparing for that, if we're not getting ready to start that God's presence is abounding in us in love so we can give it to others, we're on the wrong track. Well, you may say, well, I bought this very special gift from, you know, online, and that's for my kid or my nephew, my relative, because I want to show him or how much I love you. Well, think about it. Think of all the gifts you've given in the years past to show your, quote, love to the kids or to family. They, most of them are in the back closet somewhere, gaining dust, or most of them are gone because they broke. So that's not what Paul is encouraging us to do. Because he's encouraging us to love, and don't forget, John made it very clear in the scriptures, God is love. So when we love, we're doing God. We're bringing Godness to each other. And you can't put that in a package that you can get at the Lego store. You can't put that in a package that, that can be delivered by UPS. That love is on, that's why he uses the words, it's ongoing, because he wants you, us to abound Go over the top with, with love. So as to strengthen our hearts. What are we looking for? What are we looking for these four weeks? Are we looking for uh, a bargain? Are we looking for uh, to impress the neighbors? Are we looking for the, for the best party you can give? All those things, I attend every one of them. Okay, so don't, don't think that, oh, he, he doesn't go to parties. I go to parties. I drink. I have good times. I wrap presents. I spend too much, just like the rest of you. But the authentic goal of what we are looking for is a deeper relationship, abounding in love, as Paul says, for one another. Now, he doesn't even say Jesus yet. He's more concerned that we love one another because you can't love Jesus unless you love one another. You know, we all got families. Don't raise your hand, but how many families have a little dysfunction going there, right? 
Okay, you, you get the idea. So we all got families, and all of our families have a little dysfunction. But, but that's normal, because we're people. So because we're, we're a Catholic family doesn't mean we have no anxiety, we have no worry, we, all our bills get paid for. No, it's nonsense. What holds us together is Christ's love. So I can love and respect people in my family even if I disagree with them philosophically, morally, uh, theologically, or politically. I can still love them because love covers it all. What are we looking for? We're looking in our own lives as to where I can love my family and friends and then go, as Paul says, beyond that to all, to all people. Now we address our society at large. We address hate and prejudice. The other day I had lunch with Carol Tang and a community uh, of Filipinos at the the consulate, the general consulate, with the Filipino general consulate himself, and we were talking, and he and the community we're having dinner with were expressing their sadness over the number of Asians who were attacked I this year, not today, this year, and where that anger and hate for those Asians came from. And, 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 you know, people who hate are really stupid because they see a face and they say, oh, you must be Asian. And, like, like that's one word says it all. You, you must be Chinese because you're Asian. You, oh, you must be Filipino because you're Asian. Or because you, you have slanted eyes, you must be Japanese. Okay? That's like saying all Italians eat pasta. It's stupid. But hate is stupid. So when, when the, uh, the, the gentleman was talking about how saddened he was for his Filipino community because they were be, being attacked arbitrarily. Just last night on, on TV, there was another person reportedly attacked because she was Asian. See, that's the kind of stuff that we, as Catholics, have to fight and voice our anger toward. Paul says it on behalf of Jesus Christ. Paul says it so that your love will abound for all. For all. He doesn't say selectively. He was talking to Greeks. Are you a Greek? We might have some Greeks here, but he was talking to Greeks. But he was talking to Christian Greeks. And he was talking to Greeks who live, excuse me, Christians who live in Greece, and therefore they have to abound in their love for their fellow countrymen and women. That's our role as Christians. What are you looking for? Oh, you looking for more lights? Are you looking for the lights that you, 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 you tie in, you decorate your whole tree? And I had this. It happens every year, and thank God. I don't want to say thank God, but anyway, it happened again this year. I plug everything in. The tree is perfect. Two, two minutes later, I'm down here taking care of the Presepio, and, and, and uh, Jerry says, um, the lights are out. And I look up, Maronami, me, the whole tree is black. <laughs> Not a happy camper. So I said, I'm not going to go searching for, you know how, how difficult that is, the little bulbs? Put another set on. So we have a bunch of dead lights, and we have a bunch of living lights. Okay. That's not what we're celebrating. We're celebrating life and love. So the lights go out, throw them out. Get rid of them. doesn't matter. Our love can't be thrown out, though. Our love has to, Paul's words, abound for one another. What are we getting ready for? What are we looking for? That great gift that will tell the world how, how rich you are or how um, sort of narcissistically f favoring yourself because you're so generous in what you gave your niece or nephew or if that's what you're looking for, so everybody can say, wow, look look at him, or look at her, look at the gift she gave so-and-so. Is that what you're looking for? Boy, we're really screwed up big if that's what we're looking for. Because the love is missing. The love has to abound. And, and I, I'm, I'm making this promise today in front of you, and I'm going to keep it. The only kids I give, my, give gifts to are my four nieces and nephews, okay? And, and their parents, okay, so my great nieces and nephews and their parents. 
So it's a, a limited group, okay? Tannish. But whatever I spend on them, I made this promise to myself just the other day, whatever I spend on them, and, and I, you know, even though I'm a priest, I go overboard, um, I'm giving to the Catholic Charities, the same exact amount. So by Christmas, I will know what I spent on the four kids and their parents, and that amount I am giving to Catholic Charities so they can take care of authentically poor people. That's my prayer. That's my promise. I, am I showing abundant love by doing that? No, I'm scratching the surface. But I'm attempting to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with my family and friends while I celebrate it with the universal church in a way that is appropriate. What am I looking for? I, I'm looking for what, what all the scriptures have told us to look for, the Son of Man returning in glory. And you might say, well, why that horrible gospel of Luke, the apocalyptic gospel, the ends of the earth, the roaring of the sea, why, why that on the first Sunday of, of Advent? Because today is that day in which we look back, appreciate the present, and look forward. Now, we say that at every Mass. The anamnesis, we call it right after the consecration, Christ has come, Christ was born, Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death, rising, you restored our life, Lord Jesus, come again. Various versions of it. But that's the great mystery of our faith, that he came in time, born in Bethlehem, that he is with us now, and we are getting for his return in glory. Now, again, don't be, ignore, don't be ignorant enough, like soothsayers who say, oh, you know, the, the planes went into the World Trade Center. That, that was God's sign to the end of the world. No. Uh, the tsunami, that's God's sign to the end of the world. No. COVID, God's sign to the end. No. AIDS, God's sign. No. You don't know and you're not going to know. That's why every day we have to live ready, prepared, as if, Today was the last day of my life. So everything we do, abounding in love, will come to fruition today. And if we make it to tomorrow, do it again tomorrow. Because we as Christians look forward to his return in glory. But you want to see Jesus? What are we looking for? You want to see Jesus? He's not there on the wall. Yes, he's in the tabernacle. You want to see Jesus? Look around. Look around. Look around. These are the people that we have to abound with our love for. One another. And this is only a small segment of what's out there. On the streets, in our homes. What are you looking for? I think Paul's letter says it all. Encouraging us to overflow with love as we prepare for Christ's return in glory. Whether it's tonight or a year that none of us will be here for. Prepare. Prepare. Prepare.